starting to the top right we have SKMC, the guy who won map number one, lost then on a Tiga with a cannon rush attempt. And his opponent starting to the bottom left is of course none other than Star Tails Parting, uh, our Protoss player in red. And uh, yeah, this is going to be a pretty exciting game now. Tied series and only the winner will advance. Well, the loser might advance later, but he has to go through the uh, Constellation match in order to make it work. Yeah. It's not going to be easy. No, definitely not. And I wonder who's going to take this third game because you've seen... We've seen that MT has shown both sides of the coin. Like in game number one, he went for an aggressive DT build, but then was able to transition to the late game almost flawlessly. And then in game two, he tries to go for a cannon rush. Yeah, he dropped the hammer. Yeah. Dropped and the MC hammer. He really dropped it actually after that and like onto the floor. Yeah. Though, and uh, has to pick it up now in game number three. He was going for this run up and just lifted the hammer and was about to smash parting and then suddenly his grip faded and it drops to the floor and he's like, no! <laughs> That's what uh, it felt like, for sure. Yeah. That was just like parting. It's just this this second, you know, when you have this villain and he goes in uh, with, a, with a knife or with, in this case, the hammer, and suddenly he realizes that his opponent knows martial arts. And, uh, and uh, parting is just dodging and completely shifts his balance, uses his opponent's point of gravity, and throws him into a corner against the wall. That's what happens. Parting seeing exactly what was coming. He saw the hammer attack and he's like, no. All these years of martial arts finally pay off. Swoops in and POP! MC is down. Yeah, uh, that's. <laughs> I'm sure that's what. That's basically what happened. And they were actually playing right next to each other, and MC was trying to put the cannon down, and he just, he just did a drop kick on MC, was trying to make the cannon, and it just didn't work out. <laughs> oh man, I'm just trying. In my head, I have this, suddenly this picture of MC fighting Parting, and can you picture Parting going for some martial arts moves? No man, no way. Yeah, I uh, it would be funny. <laughs> ah well, in StarCraft 2 though, both uh, both of them are real titans, and we'll see who takes it here. We have the Cybernetics course now uh, coming up, and on this map we actually see Blink Stalkers quite often. We have Stargate play here, normal expansion play as well. So there are a lot of options for, um, that you can choose. And uh, we're gonna find out what it's gonna be. Parting is starting here with the sentry, so it looks like we are, might either see an expansion of him or attack. Yeah, yeah, sometimes when you see a sentry, it's still going to Stargate after that. It definitely delivers your Stargate, but it's like the safer way of doing it, because yeah. Stargate itself doesn't grant you any power like the uh, yeah. Robo does. A lot of players actually go for the uh, sentry first, and that's one of the builds that Creator has shown at the WCS Korea Qualifier so often. Double sentry and then going into the Stargate. You can force field the ramp if your opponent goes for the gateway aggression, buys you a bit of time, and make it some time to react. To be honest, you know, uh, I actually haven't really said my opinion on this too much in the past, but I feel like the builds that Creator and Parting is doing right now uh, for the, the sentries are actually the best builds for PvP. And when you do this build consistently, it means that you think that you're like the best Frost vs. Frost player because there's so many other builds that can kill you. But with this build, you're pretty much safe against everything if you know how to react to every different situation in PvP. So, you know, it's not to say that this is the build that everyone should do always, but I feel like if you're in game number three and you think you're the better player, you should do this build. Yeah. And we have them without any kind of shenanigans. again. So there's no tech that they're trying to hide or to protect with the double sentry. No, we instead have a normal expansion strategy into robotics for parting. The robotics, by the way, a lot faster here than for MC. You know, this is such a great map for this build because it's so hard to blink into the main. You can blink at the natural. You can use that big open surface area to have a lot of space to blink back to. But this is really cool by MC trying to put pressure on this Nexus. This is what I love in PvP, just the clash of two different builds. And now, Sentries, of course, are great defensively on a ramp, but against just two Stalkers and the Zealot, he can't quite fight this yet. Exactly. The question is how much time we really need until he can go down the ramp and really fight against this. Because he's trying to buy a lot of time here, and if he gets the Immortal out, that will help him a lot, of course, but the Immortal has just now been started. So we have more Sentries, and therefore the option to just do a little bit. Just buying time is all he needs. The Immortal will be out to help him, but you can already see that the Nexus is taking a lot of it. Yeah, and you know, here's the big story. MC's Nexus is now finished, so even though his Nexus was so much later, he didn't spend the gas to actually defend it, so he's got a faster, uh, you know, he's got a better tech coming out. But uh, I feel like now he's bought the time to get his Nexus up and start mining himself. You know, he didn't have to waste all the gas on all these sentries. Yeah, he made some stalkers and he has immortals a little bit later with the build he chose, but I feel like 
MC has taken a situation that, you know, rather than trying to really overly commit to killing parting or anything like that, he's actually put uh, the, back the probes on the table. They're just the structures that we have in the the, uh, the infrastructure for parting at this point is a little bit better. He yeah. took all these hits on the on the Nexus, but he already has his gates set up. He has uh, his own robotics. The and killing a Nexus way. in this matchup hardly ever happens unless yeah. the game is ending. So being 25% uh, down on his Nexus hit points is fine, especially because he's got a thousand shields to worry about. So Both of them are on exactly the same supply, and if you just look at the units that they use, it's fairly similar. There's not a lot of a difference here in unit composition. And MC, it looks like he really wants to be aggressive here. He's already moving out. He needs to be really careful. This is though. actually looking like a Protoss versus Terran push that we're seeing from him right now, with just a few immortals and sentries are heavy on uh, in his army, like that's what his army kind of is the backbone of the sentries, but this is going to be about micro here, yeah. and I'm not sure if MC can really make this work without clinging from two sides, and he only has one immortal, that's a big problem for him here. Exactly, one immortal against two, so this is going to get really nasty. Oh, even the third three. one arrives, yeah, the guardian shield is up here. We don't have a lot of stalkers for oh, MC, wow. though, and that crystal trap on that immortal was sick! That was really Look at all those zealots that are completely now another Immortal is being trapped here, and Parting doesn't really focus as well as he could, but he still just has too much and he pulls yeah. MC back. You know, I felt like the idea was pretty cool here, he had very few uh, Stalkers in his army, but oh my god. Oh no, MC gonna lose this Immortal too. Great micro by Parting, pulling back his Stalker, he targets that Immortal down. That was so well done, and MC is now even losing his Stalker because he doesn't really pay attention to yeah, it anymore. Just getting he lost a little bit. everything here. Yeah, look at that resources lost time. I'm sure Observer will pop it up for you guys. It's 700 to 2,025. MC just got obliterated in that fight. At first, it looked not too bad. Yeah, his, his four shields field. were so good, and, you know, his composition, he only has two stalkers. So, yeah, there's three immortals, but he's fighting mostly zealots. But then, Harding's yeah. four shields were actually what really sealed yeah. the deal. At first, it looked like MC goes in and has the, the definitely the uh, um, worst situation because of the armor composition. Realizes it takes down an immortal, does a good job, and then just backs off. But suddenly Parting goes in and with beautiful force fields, traps everything that MC has yeah. and takes it down. And immortals actually do a decent amount of damage in general, even though they're they're obviously much better at killing uh, armored units. They are big hit point units that are ranged, and it was a battle of mostly ranged units for Parting and mostly Zealots, and a few centuries for MC, so when the force fields went down, MC's units were not able to do damage, but Parting's units were, so MC just ended up losing a lot there, and the force fields were so good. And now we have a huge army supply lead for uh, Parting. He didn't really produce too many harvesters. MC is ahead in economy, but Parting has such a strong army that MC might just die. Yeah, he's trying to get his own defensive colossus out, but it's way too late. He's trying to get a few more units out as well. Ah. The immortal count as well. He has two immortals against yeah. one. Ele he, he's just ahead in every single aspect of the game, except for the economy. And his zealots are at the back. He needs to put those at the front. But MC actually can say a little bit about that as for him as well. But the immortals are the big story here. He actually just needs to target down MC's gloss. He should be able to take it. And the force fields work in favor of parting here. Yeah, most of those zealots are just trapped. They don't do damage. Finally, now we have that battle engaging. And just look at the supply. Dropping down for MC, his army is gone, he has more harvesters, but those won't do him any good against this army. Definitely not, the losses though pops out, he's trying to make it work. I just don't think he has enough, no. he's actually warping into the battlefield, which is never really a good idea, but he doesn't have a choice. Harding has done it, Harding will advance, being the first player in the group as expected, doing a great job here. MC with the early lead in the best of three, but it's Parting who takes it, GG. MC just gonna be regretting that cannon rush maybe now on Antigua. Yeah, I, I think he, so. 